happy Thursday, everybody. Mark in here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you the updates on what's going on with Invest 91L. Show you what its potential can be and how long it's going to last. There's a lot of stories talking about this could be a potential hurricane. I'm going to show you why people are saying that. Plus, what's going on? We have our next storm coming up in the Northeast. I want you all to be aware of that so you know the potential outcomes of that as well. And I'm going to talk about this potential Pineapple Express that is being pushed out there. It just sounds funny to me, but I'm going to show you all the information. So if you like No Hype Channel, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. All I'm going to give you is the facts. Now you can see with National Hurricane Center that it has increased and it has gotten better organized overnight. And there is a chance for a tropical depression or a tropical storm to form over the next day or so. But after that, it's going in such very strong shear very low precipitation, a lot of dry air coming in. It is going to very unfavorable environment. And the hurricane hunters are forecasted to go out this afternoon just to stay on top of it. Now you can see here from this weather model run that you have a potential tropical depression, a tropical storm, and then a hurricane building up in the Gulf of Mexico. First of all, I'm going to show you why that is not possible to, to grow to that. Second of all, please take heed to this. Anybody that's never been to my channel, this is by the NAM, the North American model. You never go by the NAM, especially for the tropics. It even overdoes it just on regular severe weather. This is not true. You can even see this with the next run on the NAM. It's not there, guys. So it showed a potential hurricane forming up in the Gulf. And this could create big problems. I want you to know exactly what's going on with this system. And you can see in the last six hours how it did become better organized. And it did get a lot of thunderstorms. But you see all of it is east side and it's on all these bandings right here. Now to have a strengthening low pressure, something that could really form, especially into a hurricane, you have to have all the thunderstorms in the convection all around the center. And we don't have that. And you can see on the update with HRRR that it has a chance to form up into something, but not lasting too long, just like what National Hurricane Center has showed. Friday always showed its best potential. But look at all this dry air on the west side of this system that's going east, and it gets on the south side as well, just sucks in all the precipitation this storm cannot grow and you can see that better here from the euro h triple r is an american model it's not going to show this going into other countries but you can see all this dry air that's getting wrapped around this system just leaves no precipitation for any growth but you can see with the wind shear that it has a lot of strong wind shear on the west side and this is forecasted to go east southeast towards cuba with the low pressure now this is still bringing some rain bands and a lot of potential flooding but you can see how it really grabs it by Saturday, just putting a lot of shear on this system, especially around the core. But you can see with the Euro, this shear is what is going right into it. It gets stronger and stronger on this system, and it just can't grow with all of this shear hitting it, plus all the dry air. And you can see the impact. So you have all these storms on the east side of this system, not going all the way around the center so it can grow. It's just on the east side. Plus, you're getting all this dry air and you're getting all this shear pushing this lopsided where it just can't do anything, guys. It wants to. It's in the Gulf of Mexico. It's finally going to be going towards some warmer waters. Right now, it's in the 70s, the high 70s. It needs to be at least 80 to sustain a tropical system. And it's getting a lot of shear and dry air. Just loses all of its vorticity when that happens. And you can see it from here. Just weakens down to nothing. But like National Hurricane Center says, there is a chance for a tropical depression or a tropical storm. And you can see with the members right here, a couple of them is showing it could be on the high end of a tropical depression on the edge of a tropical storm. Most of them is showing it won't make it that far at all, guys. And it is forecasted to go right towards Cuba, still 1,006 millibar pressure in four days. Matter of fact, when you look at your potential velocity anomaly, I always show that June was going to be weak and then it was going to pick up in late June and really start to strengthen up as we go towards July. This is our region here and these will more likely be in the eastern Pacific. This is normally where we go into when we're in this type of phase 
all these storms goes into the eastern Pacific. And you can see the small amount of lift that we have going through the Gulf now. The possibility is late June, early July. And you can see this on Weather Prediction Center, guys. So we do have some severe weather for today. As we go into later this evening, we have that surface low pressure for tomorrow is going to move more to the east and south. And we have some more severe weather coming late for Friday as well. As you can see, that low pressure is already starting to break up by Saturday. And by the time we go to Monday, the next storm people is going to be talking about is what's in the northeast always show that it is not going to be an issue it's going to strengthen up way far into the northern atlantic not going to be a big threat maybe bring a couple of inches of rainfall for the new england states but we are getting heavy rainfall not only from the system also from the severe weather that we are having in the south central and we having some storms brew up for the upper midwest as well so all the way to Sunday morning, Montana, Wyoming, even northern Colorado can see anywhere from one to maybe two inches of rainfall coming out of this. But for northern Texas, for the Panhandle and Oklahoma and southern Kansas, you still have a chance from anywhere from two to three plus inches of rainfall coming out of these storms. Also for Florida, for central Florida from Tampa on south, you have more rainfall coming, which is good. Tampa did get some rainfall from this already but it was in a drought and i believe this is going to fix that problem but this is bringing a lot of rainfall towards the miami region as well so just be aware of that some flooding potentially in your area plus just like i showed you yesterday your next 10-day temperature probability you're gonna be below average in the southwest above average in the northwest also for the northeast like i showed you them little cold air blasts coming through but also this is something else people are talking about this shot right here people are asking me when they're getting this pineapple express you're not so you can see that shot here by monday you're still going to be well below averages in the south central and the southwest above averages in the northwest and the upper midwest and below average along the east coast so let me explain this pineapple express to you it's just from that one shot guys that's what people are going by you can see from the epo your east pacific oscillation showing that you're going into a deep trough along the west coast all the way to the fifth and you can see this on your jet stream all the way until the fifth you get a deep trough on the EPO, the West Coast, and you have a little system over there forming. Now, this is not going to bring no Pineapple Express. It's going to bring storms further to the east. And then you have your system forming up in the northeast also, still showing that is not a big threat neither. Because you can look at your Pacific North American pattern, which shows that you're going into a positive, a little dip of cold air on the West Coast, then you go into a positive again. And remember, when you have a positive PNA, that brings the jet stream further to the east, and then you get these cold pockets that blow through. But you also get this big high pressure that grows up on the West Coast, and high pressure means clear weather, guys. Not a Pineapple Express. So you can see here when you look way up in your atmosphere that you get that system coming in right around the 5th. But also you can see in front of it, the storms will be in front of that system and push into the east while you get that cold blast, that system in the northeast for a couple of days. Now this isn't bringing freezing temperatures. It is going to bring some cooler temperatures and it's not even bringing a big threat. But there is no Pineapple Express. And you can see this with your precipital waters. You have all this dry air on the west coast, no precipitation. All of it is still in the center of the U.S. with this big heat dome we have. And that system off in the northeast is bringing some cold air and some dry air with it as well. And this is lasting all the way into June. Just dry air no pineapple express so you can see as you go through saturday it brings some cooler temperatures towards the northeast for sunday as well and then that system comes in again you have it for monday you have some cooler temperatures coming in that's just a pattern where we're going to that positive pna where you get the cooler temperatures from the center to the east coast of the u.s all the way till wednesday you still gonna have these cooler temperatures coming down thursday Friday. That's just a pattern that we're in. We're in a positive PNA. And then as you go all the way to the 13th, then with that high pressure, all that dry air, cooler temperatures come into the West Coast. You can even see on Weather Prediction Center the next seven days. It is bringing some rainfall towards the New England states, towards Florida, towards the south for our severe weather, all the way up towards Montana. No precipitation in the next seven days, guys. 
And you can see for the next 10 days, no major winds coming towards the northeast. By the Euro and the GFS, maybe some coastal 40s, that's about it. But once again, next 10 days, hardly any precipitation, no Pineapple Express. Matter of fact, you can see it again with the GFS. Take all this rainfall, all this amounts, take that with a grain of salt. We all know all this varies and changes around. I'm just trying to show you, you're not getting this big heavy precipitation on the West Coast, not even for the next 14 days. Matter of fact, in June, you can see here for Los Angeles, your precipitation chances go way down as you go through June, just barely getting any rainfall at all. And you can see this for Northern California, for San Francisco. As you go through June, you don't normally get a Pineapple Express. This is when you actually do not get any precipitation. But since you don't get hardly any precipitation for the next two weeks, <laughs> you can see how you get maybe two inches of rainfall. A lot of this is a higher elevations. So of course, if you normally get hardly any, and you might get two inches in two weeks, you're going to be well above average on your precipitation. Don't mean a Pineapple Express, guys. Now, what you do have is you have severe weather for today and tomorrow. You have chances for tornadoes for today with some wind and some hail. Here's your cities in Texas that's at risk for the tornado threat for today. And National Weather Service has it as severe hail and gusts and perhaps a tornado are possible across portions of the southern high plains this afternoon and evening. And for tomorrow, for Friday, like I showed you yesterday, you have a better chance of getting tornadoes. So you have a 2% and a 5% for tomorrow. Here's your cities at risk for the tornado threat for tomorrow. This does include New Mexico once again. We also have a wind threat and a hail threat. In this black section right here is chance for significant hail, at least two inches in diameter. So here's your cities at risk for the hail threat for Friday. And National Weather Service says strong to severe thunderstorms capable of producing large hail, strong gusts, and a couple of tornadoes are possible Friday afternoon and evening across parts of the southern high plains. So for today, you do have all these thunderstorms that is going to brew up and strengthen up as your evening comes across. Then for tomorrow, is going to grow right back with some chances for from high winds. You can see some chances for damaging winds definitely pushing behind that. So when you check your holistic values, which shows you strong updraft, chances for large hail or chances for tornadoes, large hail is for tomorrow. You can see you actually have some strong cells that will be passing through northern Texas as you go through early this afternoon, leaving a pretty strong signature. So just be aware of that that could be a tornado for tomorrow. It is stronger. It goes right across the same areas, plus more southern with very strong cells, even going into northern Mexico. Now, this could be large hail because large hail is going to be in this section for tomorrow. Also could be a chance for a tornado. Please be aware of that. But you can see with the wind gust that it is adding up to a lot of areas. Getting thunderstorms for today, maybe get some 40 miles per hour wind gust with it. Maybe an isolated 50 for that. But for tomorrow, it's really going to ramp up on your winds all the way towards Kansas with 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts. But that strong cell that we are showing in southern Texas has a lot of chances to become either large hail or a tornado. H triple R, guys, this is your 12Z run. And it's showing you actually have a chance to get all the way up towards 80, maybe even 90 miles per hour wind gusts coming with that cell as you go by seven through nine o'clock for tomorrow. Then it brings those damaging winds for Northern Texas, high forties and maybe get into the fifties with that as well. But this is showing two strong areas with chances of over hurricane force wind gusts. Please be aware of that. So this is what we have for storms for today. So you can see for Florida that it is bringing some rain bands for y'all this afternoon. A lot of that is the sea breeze creating these storms, land is hotter than the water is right now. But once again, as you go through tomorrow, you see the storms will brew right back up for Florida all the way until six o'clock through nine and 10 o'clock at night, bringing some more storms for y'all from that system in the Gulf. Plus these storms that do brew up starting around one o'clock this afternoon for Northern Texas. And you can see they do have some hail cores in this system, a lot of nasty hail cores in the system all evening long as that swings through 
all the way to seven o'clock with some hail cores and then it weakens down as you go through eight and nine o'clock with a little group of thunderstorms moving through northern texas that fades out now for tomorrow it really ramps up around one and two o'clock you get some nasty hail cores in northern texas but once you get to around 3 p.m then it's going to start dragging further southern down texas a lot of strong hail cores all in this region for tomorrow six seven eight just strong cells passing through so please be aware chances for those tornadoes i think is a strong chance especially for tomorrow but most of all thank you for your time i appreciate every single one of y'all if you hear someone talking about these stories about maybe the hurricane or pineapple express whatever it may be please share this video to them let them know what the information is so they know what to expect some people might be excited about it, but most of them will not be excited about any of this if it was true, guys. Above all things, today being the first day of hurricane season, please watch yourselves for any fear mongers that go on out there. They really drool over this part of the season. They almost wait all year just for this part of the season so they can sit here and tell you all this stuff. So you can just rival on your fears, and that is not right. You should always be honest to the public. Let them know what is coming. Most of this stuff that does get strong and scary is scary enough by itself without any hyping it up, guys. So please don't let any fear go into your hearts. I showed you the information of what could come out of it. You really need to watch for the severe weather that we have. It looks very strong, especially for tomorrow. I don't see anything coming out of this invest in the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe a tropical depression on a high end just for a moment before it weakens down and gets torn up. No Pineapple Express coming, and that system in the Northeast so far is showing it's not going to be any threat. Just remember, <laughs> not my words, God's words. Never fear. Fear, fear mongers have a place for them. Revelation 21, 7 and 8. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen. God bless you all. Hope you have a very great day today. So far, it looks like no serious threats, but the severe weather that will be in the South Central, especially for tomorrow. So please be ready for those if you're in that area. And remember, above all things, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And he says, do not fear, for he has a place for fear mongers and all those of those such. Do not fear. He is with you. Never fear. Fear is a liar. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen to that. Have a great day. Everyone.